All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. And uh, joining us right now, all the way from uh, all the way from the left coast, and how he puts up with uh, with uh, Stanford University, we were just talking about. But uh, he is uh, the William J. Casey Fellow and president of the Government Accountability Institute for the uh, Hoover Institution, and he is the author of a great new best-selling book extortion how politicians extract your money by votes and line their own pockets we welcome in peter schweizer hello peter hey it's great to be back with you steve great Thanks to have you back me. and great to have you in studio uh, this time around and um you know <laughs> we're sitting here and we're talking uh, before the interview started uh, i don't even know where to start um <laughs> but uh, you know I, I i asked you if you uh, had any uh, any take on the uh, justice department uh and jp morgan in this 13 billion dollar settlement uh, going after J uh, uh, Mr. Diamond's group after they stopped supporting uh, Obama, and that you know the war against the banks is just beginning. And, and you brought up a very good point about the uh, the you know, Obama Justice Department. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's interesting here in New York. You probably remember, you know, 20 years ago, the squeegee guys. You know, that would absolutely come, come to your car and they'd, they'd have a spit. No, they if they, if you're lucky, they had water and liquid. <laughs> Sometimes they'd spit and run newspaper on it. Right, Believe right. me. And so they got that in one hand, and they got a brick. Let's say yeah, in the other if hand. You don't it's like, don't pay, I'm going to put this brick. Well, yep. literally, Eric Holder is the guy holding the brick. Um, and what I point out in the book is that the Department of Justice has selectively been going after some and not after others. Uh, and we're talking here about potentially facing criminal charges and jail time on very, very obscure or nebulous laws like the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, where you can charge anybody with anything. And they literally are targeting President Obama's political opponents. Um, and so it's really the same kind of thing. If you pay up, you you'll be fine. If you donated to the Obama campaign or you now donate to Obama political organizations, you'll be fine. If you don't, uh, the proverbial brick is going to be thrown through your windshield and the consequences are going to be bigger than just having your car windshield yeah, broken. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, it is so scary to think that that's, what, that's our, our Justice Department. I don't want to get, get bogged down on the Justice Department. Let's move along to a, a nomination that was announced, I guess, on Monday, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe last Friday, and that's uh, for the new Homeland Security uh, yeah. director position, which is kind of an important position, you would right. think. And and this fits right in, and this is the first thing that comes to mind when I when I see the title of your book, Extortion. Um, what about the, uh, the, the guy that has been uh, nominated um, uh, I think it's um, uh, Jay Johnson. Right. And here's a guy who donated uh, tens of thousands of dollars to Obama's campaign in 08. Where is his qualification to be Homeland Security Director? Yeah, I mean, this is what's also very troubling. I mean, we, we all accept and believe and know that presidents come in. They're going to get to sort of select their people. That's subject to Senate confirmation. But really what's happened in the last four or five years is sort of the merging of political operations with governing operations. Take the Department of Justice, and this is very similar to what you're seeing with Secretary Johnson at HHS. Uh, sorry, not yet. He's not. Homeland not, Security. Yeah. Yes. Nominee, yeah. Yes. Um, the top five people at the Department of Justice, starting with Eric Holder, the Attorney General, and others, were all campaign bundlers for the Obama campaign. These are the people that are deciding what the policy is going to be, who they're going after, who they're not going after with civil or criminal charges. They were bundlers for the campaign. And so you have this sort of politicized component of the Department of Justice that is unprecedented. I was going to say, bundlers usually wound up as uh, ambassadors that's to right. you know, Japan or something. That's, that's not exactly anymore. Now they run the government. That's that's exactly right. I mean, if you look at George W. Bush, for example, he certainly had bundlers. There were two relatively low-level Department of Justice officials that were bundlers. The others that became attorney general or associate attorney general, those were not fundraisers. Um, and so this is a politicized movement, and I think it reflects a mindset in D.C. that you see with this administration. You also see with both political parties in Congress that, that what we're talking about here is extortion. We think a lot of times that if we just had left our politics politicians alone and didn't have all these bad outside influences trying to, you know, pressure and control them, everything would be fine. Certainly there is that problem, but I think a larger problem is the political class basically threatening private companies, industries, and basically saying, you need to pony up, and if you don't pony up, we're going to throw the book at you. There's a survey done, Steve, that says over half of cor corporate executives that gave donations said they did so because they feared if they didn't, something bad would happen to their company or their industry. And today, the insurance companies, the private insurance companies, are meeting at the White House with Barack Obama and Kathleen Sebelius, and 
you know, boy, would there be a fly on the wall of that meeting? What the <laughs> heck is he going to be saying to them? And they're going to come out all smiles and say, oh, yeah. you know, we're, we're right behind good old Doc Obama. Yeah, and this is what happened uh, when the bill was being debated in 2009. There were several health uh, companies that were going to send out uh, flyers to their customers saying, hey, this is being debated. This could affect your rates. They were basically told, we will subject you to a federal investigation if you do this. And, you know, for a health insurance company, keep in mind that Medicare, Medicaid, the policies that are established by H HHS, it can destroy Absolutely. a health insurance company. Absolutely. So you're going to pay attention. And, and so we have a very serious problem, I think, where you essentially have this political class, which is intimidating citizens and companies and saying what they can and can't do. We're talking to Peter Schweizer, his uh, new book, Extortion, How Politicians Extract Your Money, Buy Votes, and Line Their Own Pockets. You know, your previous bestseller, uh, Throw Them All Out, about uh, the members of Congress. Um, I, I want to ask you about that. Uh, who was I speaking to the other day um, about uh, whether or not Speaker Boehner's position is safe? It was a congressman, and he, he alluded to the fact that nobody, I, I, it was a Tea Party congressman, and nobody's going to, it, 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 no one's inclined to try to overthrow the speaker because of the establishment within the Republican Party, and it works this way with the Democrats too, yep. where you're dependent upon their support, their money, yep. their committee assignments, and all that. And you write extensively in your book about how you know uh, it, money changes hands, promises are made, arms are twisted, bribes are taken and made to get chairmanships to be on certain committees. So it's a, it, it's almost a hopeless situation if you're a a, a, a Tea Party or just a, an American who's concerned and wants change and wants to change the status quo within either party, it's really not going to happen. Well, I, I'm, I'm an optimist by nature, and I think you're right. It is a terrible situation that we're in right now. There are, as, and we actually publish in the appendix of extortion, the actual party lists of how much you have to pay if you want to be on the Ways and Means Committee, how much you want have to pay. And what do you mean you, when you say pay? Literally, the party says if you want to be on the House Ways and right. Means Committee, what, you got to give money? You've got to give them say four hundred thousand dollars you have to give the party four hundred from your $1. campaign war chest well left you have to whatever. raise it and the and the members of congress of course they don't want to go back to their constituents right, and say, I'm it. so who do they go to they go to the lobbyists the people that they're going to be regulating and dealing with to raise that money and if you don't come up with the money they will boot you off of a committee you could be a medical doctor it makes sense you're on a health committee right. if you don't pony up the cash they're going to put you on a less powerful less important committee that is just insanity just total insanity. But what about also briefly the the dependency of the uh, of the uh, you know incumbent Republican or Democratic Congressperson who has to run again in a year and a half or a year or whatever can't really fight the leadership, right? Yeah, that no, that's exactly right. They use money as a form of control. It's carrot, but there's also a lot of stick, and so it's very very hard for people to challenge the authority. And John Boehner, for example, in the House, Nancy Pelosi for the Democrats have really made their reputations as people who can raise a lot of cash. Some of that. Cash Cash comes because people just support their ideas. A lot of it comes because industries are scared and feel they have to play ball. All right. Listen, it's all in here and much, much more, folks. Uh, extortion, how politicians extract your money, buy votes, and line their own pockets. Peter Schweizer, great to see you, Peter. Thank you very Thanks much for so coming. Much, Appreciate Steve. it. Always great. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Barone will be here. And uh, he's got a new one. And uh, we're going to talk more about uh, Obamacare and the union's revolt against it. That's right. On the Steve Ballsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.